Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy and I'm the creator of McCarthy Math Academy. I'm super pumped that you're choosing to spend some time with me as we break down today's best standard. I know your time is valuable. I wanna respect that. So let's go ahead and jump on in. This standard is MA.5.NSO.2.5. MA stands for math. Math. Five stands for fifth grade, NSO, number sense, not for rations, and then we're on 2.5. By the way, this document that I'm using, I didn't make it. The Florida Department of Education releases it to the public, and I'm just showing you how I take what they provide with clarification for the standards to create resources that are aligned to the standards and taking on the best. So let's walk through it. The standard says that students will be expected to multiply and divide a multi-digit number with decimals to the tenths. Be careful of that. We're only going to the tenths place by one tenth and one hundredth with procedural reliability. This is step two. So in the previous standard 2.4 for this one, we were at the exploration level. And now we're moving into the second stage, which means we can use different strategies, but students need to be able to start following a procedure with these. So we are multiplying and dividing by one tenth and one hundredth in fraction, that's not a fraction, in decimal form, just like this. So here's an example. The number 12, 12 and 13 tenths tenth divided by one hundredth can be thought of what? times one hundredth equals twelve and three tenths to determine that the quotient is one thousand two hundred thirty. This clarification is good. It tells us that we're focusing on place value of digits when we're multiplying or dividing. So there are a lot of related benchmarks here in fifth grade. These benchmarks right here in the NSO strand are your place value benchmarks. This fraction standard right here is where we're predicting the relative size of fractions. These algebraic reasoning standards focus on um, numerical expressions. Then we have measurement conversions, real world with money, which actually this is, this will come into play right there in a minute. And um, perimeter and area with fractions and decimals. So that's good. You need to know that equation means that there's an equal sign present. There's two sides and they need to equal each other. An expression means that we do not have an equal sign present. Now, where are they coming from in fourth grade? This is the standard that aligns vertically to this one. So in fourth grade, they do cover what one tenth or one hundredth more, so we're adding, or less is. However, as of creating this video, we are just starting to implement the best standard. So they might not be coming up with this, but just know that if you have access to the fourth grade videos as well, you can refer back down to the standard to show them that alignment if you want to. Also, I put in here that ma.4.nso.1.1 is our 10 times greater or less standard, which will help in shifting our place values a little bit. Um, and then in sixth grade, they will be expected to multiply and divide positive multi-digit numbers with decimals. So this will help them for next year with understanding. Next up is the purpose and instructional strategies section. And here, I'm just gonna point out some things that jumped out at me. This just clarifies that procedural reliability refers to the ability for students to develop an accurate, reliable method 
that aligns with the student's understanding and learning style. Fluency of multiplying and dividing multi-digit numbers with decimals is not expected until sixth grade. This is a change because in the Common Core standards, students in fifth grade did have to multiply and divide with decimals. Now we're moving it up to sixth grade and giving them the building blocks that they need in fifth grade. This is all about seeing the relationship and allowing them to, and we can do that with, with understanding patterns, really talking about patterns. I like right here that they said, instruction may include the language that the digits shift relative to the position of the decimal point, as long as we are explaining what's happening, why they are shifting, how they're getting 10 times greater or 10 times less. Um, sticky notes, putting digits on sticky notes to show that, they mentioned that there, that's a good strategy to use and showing how the value shift or the decimal point moves. So here, they do mention the word power of 10, but I haven't seen this term being used in any of the examples. So even though we are multiplying and dividing by 1 tenth and 1 hundredth, I haven't seen it used as a power of 10 anywhere on here, besides this part right here, just saying that we know it's a power of 10, but I don't know if that term is explicitly being used. Of course, a place value chart like this would be helpful to show them what's happening when we increase the value or de decrease the value. And here it says that students can confuse that multiplication always results in a larger product and that division always results in a smaller product. That's where they're coming from in third grade and fourth grade, right? Usually when they multiply, they realize it's a large number. And when they divide, the quotient is smaller. And in fifth grade, we're opening up the conversation. This standard opens up the learning to address this misconception. All right, I like here this instructional task that they've provided as an example. It does include money, which is helpful for that money standard. I believe it was M.2.1. And then here, <laughs> I was like, whoa, wowzers. Um, because they're having the expression, the product of this, finding the product of this, and then seeing if this is true, if it is 10 times less. So there's a lot of work going into a problem like this, hence the wowzers. And check out video number three. We'll show you, I'll show you that in just a second. But video number three, I wanted to target that head on. So let's go ahead and see what you have access to and you're taking on the best membership, okay? So here we are at the website. You can enter up here at the tab or click the box right here. This is members enter here, taking on the best fifth grade NSO, and then scrolling all the way down to five MA.5.NSO.2.5. dot five dot NSO dot 2.5. That is our standard for today, multiplying and dividing by one tenth and one hundredth. So it'll open up right to your bronze resources, which means that you have access to the video lessons and the printable student guides that go with this standard. So you can see the first lesson says multiply by one tenth and one hundredth. That was in the standard. Then we have divide by one tenth and one hundredth. And then going back and forth, multiplying and dividing by one tenth and one hundredth. So let me show you this video. So it, the directions say to multiply each number by one tenth and one hundredth. Use a place value chart to demonstrate how to solve each problem. So we're taking this problem, we'll break it into a place value chart, and we'll also connect it to these fractions here, okay? Because I believe any opportunity that we can connect a fraction to a decimal and a decimal to a fraction, I seize that opportunity. So I did here. If you were like, I don't even know how to go about teaching this, watch the video lesson so you can see for yourself how to break it down, a way to break it down, and then um, that way you can feel more confident with teaching it. Okay, so then we have dividing by one tenth and one hundredth, same kind of thing, and then multiplying and dividing by one tenth and one hundredth. And you can see here from the sheet that we are, that this is similar to problem, the item that they gave us in the standard. I wanted to break that down head on of how you could tackle problems like that. Okay. Um, you can go here to the silver resources. If you have the silver plan, we've got printables, answer keys, and then your math misconception video right here. Those are the highlights of the silver resources. You can go back to the bronze at any time. I'll click on the printables so you can see here's your video lesson, you know, because of the icon right there. 
and then we have some extra practice. So the silver not only has the video lessons, but also some extra practice for after the videos so your students can feel confident, they can gain that confidence in the skill. Here's your other video lesson with dividing and an extra practice video lesson. Third video lesson where we have those two sets, the product of 13 and 6 tenths times 1 hundredth is how many times greater than or less than the product of that expression right there. And then some extra practice with those. Then we have the math missions where we're incorporating money into this problem. How many dimes are in this number? So figuring out how many tenths are in this number, how many hundredths are in this number, a written response question there. And then for math misconception mystery, that's where this video is right here. But I walk you through the whole thing in the video, but basically your students will solve this problem when instructed to do so, and then they will watch as four characters solve that same problem. Those four characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes. Um, three of the characters will make a common mistake that students make and only one of them will solve it correctly and has the most reasonable answer. So after they jot down their notes for each character, then they're instructed to fill out their detective report, which is page two. They say the most reasonable answer belongs to character number what? They determine who has the most reasonable answer and writes why here. And then we don't stop there. We take the other three and break it down. So students do this part independently, but you do have my detective report in the answer key so you can see where we're trying to get them to be thinking, okay? So that's awesome. You can click play, you can full screen, all that jazz. And then let's go over the gold resources for those who have the gold membership. You can go back to the bronze video lessons or the silver extra printables at any time if you have the gold. And um, you do have access to this ad free version of breaking down the best. It's just one of the little perks of having a gold membership, but these videos are available on YouTube as well. The big ticket items of the gold resources um, include the mini assessment that you receive for each standard, which I know that you probably have many assessments that your district provides, but this just gives you a little bit of extra, extra practice there. Okay. And then there's your mini assessment answer key. And then finally, you have access to McCarthy Math 155, which, let me go back. This is the program that I aligned, that was aligned to the Common Core standards. When I was researching the new best standards, I was like, y'all need something that's specifically aligned, but a lot of people still wanted to be able to use this, so I included it as part of the gold. If you go on fifth grade, you can see all of these lessons that come with it. Look. In operations with fractions, we have 30 video lessons and printables that go with it. We were working on decimals. You know what, it, it's kind of gonna be here in place value, but this standard doesn't specifically align. Uh, let me see if there's anything we can pull from it. Comparing decimals. Kind of goes with powers of 10 because we specifically said powers of 10 in yeah not so much not so much but it's I mean there's stuff there that's again that's why I created taking on the best so for this other standards there are skills that trickle over for this standard it's not as much happening a little bit with dividing by powers of 10 kind of sorta but again it's not specifically aligned so you do have access to that but there is a lot of other good stuff involved there that does carry over okay um yeah so that is it for your for breaking down this standard and seeing the resources that are available to you that are specifically aligned to the standard that we talked about today all right before we close out this video i'd like to remind you that what you wake up and you do every day with your life as a teacher it really does matter our students they are the future and we have the wonderful opportunity of being able to help them as, and, and believe in them until they can believe in themselves. So thank you for all that you do. I know this profession is very stressful and challenging, 
um, but it is worth it. And I thank you for all that you do. Thanks for allowing me to be a part of your journey and I will see you soon. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.